I love ninjas. Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved the idea of these masked warriors that can move around in almost an invisible manner through the night and protect the people from the shadows. I also happen to love Kamen Rider, and I have always wanted a ninja themed Kamen Rider season, and even came up with some of my own ideas for how one could work. When Kamen Rider Shinobi appeared in Kamen Rider Geo, I was ecstatic, and I was even happier when they announced that he would be getting a special mini-series to go along with his appearance in the main show. Today, I'm here to give my review of this mini-series and give my thoughts on it. Before I get into it, please be sure to let me know what you thought of this mini-series down in the comments, on the channel Discord server, and on Twitter. And now, let's jump into Rider Time Kamen Rider Shinobi. In the beginning of the whole series, we get a nice explanation of kind of what's going on in this world. It's set three years in the future in 2022, and they explain that because of problems in the world's ecosystem, now they're training people to become ninjas to combat, to, to combat this because they have power over the elements. It's a bit of a strange idea, I guess. That's probably one of my biggest problems, just the idea of why there are ninjas in this world. Seems a little strange. They didn't really need to do it, they could just explain this is just some ninja city or somewhere within ninja school. You don't really have to come up with this weird idea that ninjas are needed to save the world now. That felt a little strange, but it was alright. That's how that's how we open it, and I kind of like then throughout this series, we kind of they kind of expect you to know how Kamen Rider and Toku works. So they don't really go over in explicit detail about all this stuff. For example, we never really explain where Rentaro gets his gear, or at least, yeah, his gear, his gourd for the Shinobi driver. We, and we also see him talking to this frog. So we can assume, like, the frog gave him the gourd, as we see at the end. But, like, we can also assume this frog is the mentor. They don't really go out of their way to explain that as well. And I kind of like that. It's kind of like... Spider-Man Homecoming, if you've seen that, there's another Spider-Man parallel I'll get to in a second. But it's kind of like that movie where they're like, you know how Spider-Man's origin is, so we're just gonna skip over that in this movie. Same thing with the Kamen Rider Shinobi series. They're like, you know how most Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu stuff work, so we're not really gonna spend too much detail explaining that. The other Spider-Man aspect that I like was the fact that he's pretending to be like a bad ninja, like his sister thinks he's just terrible at being a ninja. Well, obviously, as Kamen Rider Shinobi, as we see, he's probably like I mean, as they say, he's the legendary ninja. So that was kind of cool. I like that idea, that kind of dual aspect. I always like when we have common writers trying to protect their identity and make it a secret as opposed to them just transforming out in the open like kind of we've been doing in recent series, which that's fine. But I always kind of like this mystery, this double aspect, no pun intended, when we have the common writers trying to protect their identity. That is always cool to see. Speaking of Renro's character, I also really like the interactions with his sister. Just kind of the two of them I mean, just kind of yelling at each other, poking fun at each other. I like that kind of interaction. It's something we don't really see too often in, like, in Kamen Rider. Just the Geo series, for example. Like, Geo never really acts kind of in this, like, brotherly or sisterly manner in Tsukuyomi's case. They don't really act like that around each other. They just act like friends. But I kind of like how we have a family member of our main writer having a big part in the series. The sister character is fine. She doesn't really do too much. She's more of a plot device, I guess. But from the sister, I kind of want to segue into Ichi, who is coming out of Hatari. I don't really like Ichi. I kind I'm uh, okay. I'm mixed on Ichi. I feel like there was an opportunity here where we realize that Ichi's father works for whatever the big ninja corporation is called. See, that's where I'm saying like the ninja thing gets really out of hand. There's a company of ninjas. What? So I feel his father works for or is in charge of this ninja corporation he is the son of he's the son of his father brilliant job he's the heir to this company but we're told this company's like evil because they fund the rainbow ninjas the the evil group of the series so i thought like when he was fighting shinobi trying to stop his sister from winning the tournament i thought that was him like working for his father or i thought he was gonna join up with shinobi and fight against the rainbow ninjas against his father kind of like be rebellious against his father that would have been cool to see but instead he's just kind of a writer for just a goofy reason which is just to stop shinobi so that he can be the one that everyone likes well no everyone already likes him as we see he just wants iroha the 
sister and she likes shinobi which is also a bit of a strange thing because that's her brother but she doesn't know that i guess so i can't really complain too much but anyway hatari wants to stop shinobi because he just wants iroha to like him i mean it's it's simple but it's very strange it's strange, but I just kind of like the character, I guess, because just the way he is, like, he's very goofy. He's honestly really funny. He's kind of, he reminds me of Ryuga, except he's just not as a good a character. He's basically Ryuga if you take out the character, because he is kind of funny. He's not as funny as well, but he is funny, and I, I guess that's his defining trait, and I guess I like that about him. So he's alright, he's tolerable. But where we don't get tolerable is our villain here. The villain just wants to expose Shinobi and figure out who he is. But it's because he also likes Iroha, and it's literally Hattori, but if he was evil. So, like, they literally made our villain, they kind of just undercut the villain of this little series by just making him a joke that likes Iroha. That was kind of dumb, I didn't like that. Literally, you just, you didn't need to put that in, and it would have been fine. He would have been, like, a one-dimensional villain, but I'm not the person who's looking for, like, the most developed villain ever. I just hate when we make our villain just a joke at the end, and not, like, a joke, like, haha, funny. It was kind of weird that this, and it was, like, an old man, too, so it's a little creepy, too. So, I don't, I don't know, I'm not gonna delve into that, but I thought the villain, kind of just undercutting the villain and making him also like Iroha and just trying to impress her was really strange. Now, the fight scenes of this are really amazing. This is where I think this stands out, although the story, I think the overall story with this is really cool, trying to figure out who this villain is, who Hattori is, even though it's kind of obvious because it was announced before the series, but if you didn't see those announcements, it wasn't too obvious. But I like the dynamic with Shinobi, Hattori, but I like that dynamic. I like kind of the story. Rentro as a character is really great. Really, all the characters in this are great except the villain. So, overall, I thought the series was really cool. It's just my biggest problem with it is it's it's a three-episode series, and it really makes me sad because it really seems like they were trying to do something amazing with this. Like, yeah, I, as I said, the ideas in this are really cool. I've always wanted a ninja series. I see a lot of other Kamen Rider fans also want a ninja series, and this really delves into that, and it really makes the whole three episodes feel really distinct and different from, like, anything in Kamen Rider. Like, Geo, Build... Exe, just our three most recent. Like, I like all of those series, and they all feel different. But, like, Shinobi just feels so distinct from all three of those, and it feels more distinct from, like, any single one of those than they do from each other. Even though they all feel different from each other, Shinobi feels so much more different. And I feel like they were trying to tell a greater story here, because at the end, we get the thing where the frog, who was also really funny in the beginning too, the frog comes out of the painting, and it's revealed to be just a person. He has, like, mysterious intentions here. He wants to create rivals for Shinobi for unclear reasons, and then we get, like, a monster montage of more ninja riders and then that's it so i'm not sure what their plans are with common Art shinobi because it seemed like they wanted to do more with shinobi but like this is only three episodes so i'm not sure if they're like oh when 2022 rolls around now we'll have common Art shinobi as a series i don't know if they're trying to do something with him in the summer movie in the next series i i don't know but i feel like there's more they're trying to do with common Art shinobi and it's really disappointing that as of now there are no plans to do more with common Art shinobi because i really enjoyed this mini series and i think it was a great watch and it was really fun and really awesome. So, as always, let me know what you thought of the first Rider Time special for Kamen Rider Geo down in the comment section, and please consider leaving a like and sharing the video if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more Kamen Rider and Tokusatsu content, and I hope to see you next time, where we take a look at the next Rider Time special based on the next rider that we saw in Geo, Kamen Rider R Ryuki? You know, um, I think now I know why Common Rider Quiz is covered in question marks.